Hey, how's it going? This is Twisted Messes. What are we doing today? Uh, I recently got the Noisy Cricket. I've been loving this thing, but I think that there is a kind of a gap in information about how to properly use a uh, series mod that's unregulated. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a short video about that. Like I said, I've been absolutely loving this thing. Super simple design, very clever. Um, and there are some, you know, safety issues with using a series unregulated box mod. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive up close and kind of just give a little quick overview. And I uh, might throw a build in at the end there. Or I might make a separate video for the build, uh, depending how much time I have here. Hope you enjoy it. All right, you guys. Here is the Noisy Cricket disassembled. Um, you can see there is the connector plate down here and then two slots for your batteries to go in and you can see down there that the plate which completes the circuit across the bottom there so it's a real simple design it's really kinda elegant how simple it is and um, you got your 510 connector here which is a hybrid adapter so first of all the RDA that you put onto this has got to have a protruding positive connection so when that screws in there you want the only thing that's going to be contacting the top of the battery to be that positive post connection. So if you have an RDA or if you're trying to use a tank on this, I would not use any sort of sub-ohm tank on this device uh, just because a lot of times their 510 connection, um, you're not going to have that nice protruding piece for the positive por portion. So you want to make sure that's sticking out there um, quite a bit in order to ensure that your battery is going to be making only contact there because if you your battery contacts any other part on the negative on the threading or something like that you're going to have a hard short and that's what's going to be really dangerous especially with um, a series box so that piece is the one that you screw in uh, there to give you your 510 connection this other portion is the button assembly And so when you press this down, it comes up, you'll see this ring of insulation here, and that's to prevent your battery from making contact with a switch until you push the button. So once you push that down, that protrudes out, makes contact with the battery, and then it completes the circuit. And since your atomizer is already touching the battery on the other side, um, when you push the button, it completes the circuit. It's very simple. and. Uh, And that's just so cool how compact this thing is. Um, I'm really pleased with how it looks and how it performs. But the, there's some common misconceptions in here are some batteries that I'm using. These are by Pegasus Vapor Academy. Um, and I really like these because they're rewraps just like the majority of the companies out there, but they're honest rewraps. So you're going to get actual amp ratings for the batteries, actual milliamp hours and then it tells you you know a lot of information that is missing from a lot of these vaping batteries um, anyway so these ones are the 25 amp and that's important um, when you're calculating what kind of build to put on here and so one goes in positive side up the other one goes in negative side up and so the way that the series the way that a series connection works is that both of these batteries, when you connect the positive and negative, it's going to double the voltage of these batteries. So they're normally 4.2 with a full charge. And so when you put them together, positive to negative, what they're going to do is it's actually going to become the 8.4 volts. And so when you have a lower resistance build on here, it's going to be doubling the amperage that's coming out that within what normally would do with a single cell or with two cells in parallel. So when you have two batteries in parallel, the amp draw is split between both cells. The voltage stays the same. And when you put them in series, the voltage is doubling. The amp draw is staying um, the same on each cell. So basically that little plate at the bottom 
if you imagine these two batteries together like this, positive to negative, when you connect the positive and negative to that plate, the connector plate on the bottom, it's creating that series connection. And let's go ahead and just screw this button in here. So you have the insulator there. And one thing um, that I want to note is if your batteries are getting messed up like this, I would not recommend using them at all, honestly. You need to get them rewrapped or, um, you know, go recycle them or something and get some new batteries. Because at that point, if this goes down too far, the wrap getting removed, then it's possible it could, you know, short out on the side of the mod and be auto firing on you. Um, which, if it happens, you know, when you're not there, uh, it could be pretty dangerous. It could overdraw the batteries or start a fire or something. So you want to be careful. Um, you want to get rid of batteries that are, you know, past their prime. So this screws right in here. Now if you were to screw this on the positive side, um, it wouldn't really matter. Like you, It'll work both ways, but the thing is that that connector plate is pretty thick, and so there's not as much of an exposed positive portion here. Um, so it would still make contact probably because it protrudes out just a tad, just a hair, but you're going to get a better connection on that negative piece just because there's enough area for this to go and make contact with. So let's go ahead and screw that in. So the button assembly on the negative side. And once you get it hand tightened down, you just use a little coin to tighten it the rest of the way. Just like this simple hybrid mech mod. And I've actually just been using this uh, dot mod, the Petri dot mod, just because the stainless steel finish. I think it looks really nice with the mod. And they do have a nice protruding positive connection there for use with a hybrid. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this process here. And the build I have on here is a parallel parallel Clapton. I use 28 gauge Canthal and 40 gauge Canthal. I like to use Canthal on series builds just because it's a higher resistance. Um, and so that the doubling the voltage isn't going to just catch on fire right away. So this came out to 0.5 ohm, um, right around 0.5 ohm. A little below which with and I'll get into the resistances and stuff and what all that means um, in a second but that's kind of an overview of the basic design of how it works so another thing is um I've seen people had concerns online that another safety issue that they feel with this device is if you put these batteries in in parallel that it's going to be dangerous. Now, if you had a parallel box mod, it would be, and then you throw them in in a stacked configuration, then yeah, that is going to create a dead short. But on a series mod, if you put these both in the same direction, all it does is it doesn't allow the circuit to complete. So if you imagine if these batteries are both connected in series, um, the circuit's completed between both of them, and it doubles the voltage. Now, what if you turn these batteries around backwards and then you had positive on both end and negative touching? That's not going to do anything. Yeah, if this was um if that was a serious safety concern uh, as far as putting these in backwards in a series box, then flashlights back in the day uh, would have had warnings on them and stuff. Um don't put them in backwards, etc. So both of these in and just to kind of show you I'll go ahead and put them in the wrong direction both positive facing up and I'll screw on the Addy and just kind of show you that nothing happens now I'm not saying that um, you know you should do this or anything 
it's not going to work. It's not going to do anything, so. No heat, nothing, just nothing happens. Um, but if you have a parallel box mod that's fully mechanical, you don't want to put them in this, the opposite way. So don't do the stack configuration because then your batteries could vent out. All right, let's move on to the resistance of the build. So you'll remember that these batteries are 25 amp batteries. That's the limit, and you don't want to go over that amp limit. So how do we calculate the amp uh, limit, or the amps that the build that we're using is going to be drawing? So this is Twist Mess's RDA, and I've got a 10 wrap, 28 gauge fuse Clapton on there. Um, it's a dual coil, comes out to basically 0.5 ohms. So the decimal point is before that 4.496 whatever. It's 0.5 for practical purposes here. Um, so each one of these single coils is 1 ohm. Okay, and just keep that in mind. I'm going to kind of go over some stuff here. So remember 0.5 ohm. Now, like I said, the two batteries together fully charged in series are going to be giving out 8.4 volts. Let's zoom out here. Now that's not under load though. That's just the actual nominal voltage of the batteries. So let's go ahead and put these in. This is another series mod, uh, series mod, box mod. Um, this is one that I purchased for low ohm, from low ohm box mods. Uh, he engraved my logo and stuff in there. And this one, the reason I'm using this is because it has pass-through voltage in it. And make sure I got negative. Negative lined up with the negative spot. Positive lined up with the positive spot. You'll notice these are just like in the noisy cricket, where you have one battery going down, one up. And that's going to be putting them into series. So if you don't have anything on here, you'll notice those are fully charged. It's giving us 8.4 volts. Now when you put the atomizer on here, Now your batteries are going to be, it's going to be the voltage under load because there's resistance in this, there's sag in those batteries under load, um, there's internal resistance in the batteries, also in this box mod there's going to be resistance as well. Um, but this is going to give our pass through voltage, 7.33, 7.32, and you'll notice that those ramp up right away um, at this kind of voltage level. But let's remember that voltage. 7.3, let's call it. Now to calculate the amp draw on here, what we're going to do is go to the calculator. So you take the voltage, which was 7.3, and divide it by the resistance, which you'll remember was 0 0.5. And that's going to give you your amps. This is using Ohm's Law. And there's a lot of Ohm's Law calculators, uh, apps that you can get for your phone even, but it's pretty simple. You take the voltage and you divide it by the resistance. That's going to give us 14.6. Now that's the amps. 14.6. You'll remember those were 25 amp batteries, so we're well within the limits of those batteries with this build. And then in order to figure out the wattage you're going to get, approximate wattage, you just multiply the amps by the voltage. And remember the voltage was 7.3. So it's 106 watts, and that's um, with fully charged batteries. Of course, as you use the batteries, you're going to get battery sag, etc. And you know, this isn't the most accurate way to check uh, pass-through voltage, but it gives us a rough idea. And um, and I think for this application, since we're well within the boundaries, 14.6 amps um, of those batteries, that's going to be a safe build. I still kind of want to go over the reasoning behind doing a dual coil rather than just one single coil. Um, so basically, each one of these coils is going to be approximately 1 ohm. So let's go back to the calculator. And if we take 7.3 volts divided by 1 ohm, it's going to be 7.3 times 7.3 to give us the wattage. Now, I hope this isn't confusing or anything. Um, there are Ohm's Law calculators on the apps, like I had mentioned before, um, which basically do all the calculation for you, but it's fairly simple. So you're basically, on that one coil, single coil, with that voltage coming through, 
you're getting 53 watts out of it. So it's basically the 106 watts is from both of these coils wattage added together. So if you had, um, so it distributes the heat between both coils. And so it's going to be producing, you know, the same amount of heat um, as if you had one coil that was a 0.5 ohm. But if you imagine if you had one coil that's 0.5 ohm, um, then you're concentrating that heat all into one coil. And for me, then vape is not as enjoyable when you have all the heat concentrated into one coil. There's less surface area uh, to distribute the heat within the juice. And so basically you're putting all that heat onto a smaller surface of juice. And um, I just find it burns a lot easier when there's just a single coil at that resistance. And uh, I don't find the vape is enjoyable. As far as safety goes, it's going to be very similar to having the dual coils on there. But as far as the vape quality, for a series build, I prefer to distribute that heat between two coils. Okay, and I just want to show you also um, the build that I have on the Petri RDA that I've been using is 4 point, it was 0 0.43, 0 0.44 um, ohms. So... I just want to show you what that little difference in the ohm level is going to do. Because you remember the last build was 0.5, and this one's more closer to like a 0.43. So first, let's just do the same process real quick here, where we throw this onto the series box. And you'll notice the voltage drops pretty quickly. It's already at 8.3, and all I did was just those test fires. So as your voltage drops, obviously, in the battery cells, your amp are going to go down as well. Your wattage is going to go down. And anyway, so get this screwed on here. And let's just check real quickly. Um, voltage under load. 6.99. We'll call it 7 volts. Okay, so we got 7 volts divided by the resistance, which was 0.43. You're up to 16 amps, and see just that tiny difference has already raised it up um, basically 2 amps there. And so multiply that by 7, gives us our wattage, and our wattage is increased um, by what, almost whatever, 8 watts or something like that. So not a huge difference, but you'll, you can see how quickly that can add up. So let's say for example here, Let's say we have a 0.25 ohm build on there, and it's going to probably drop to around 6.4, 6.5 volts. So divide that by the 0.25, you get 25 amps. And so at this point, when you get down to that ohm level, um, you know, down to the 0.2 and stuff, that's where I don't recommend it. Because the pass-through voltage is only so accurate on these things, um, regardless of how they're made. I mean, I don't know the accuracy of any of these pass-through uh, inline voltage meters that are purchased, you know, uh, they're mass-marketed and purchased from China, etc. Um, so it, could, it might not be completely accurate. So once you get down here and you're starting to build right at the limit of the device or the limit of the batteries, there could be small variances, um, you know, in the actual voltage under load etc. You could be over your amp limit without knowing it. Plus, let's just see how much wattage that is. 160 watts. Um, and my <laughs> Some people enjoy that. I don't personally really enjoy that high a wattage. Um, generally, I'll be right around the 100 watt range. And what I also like about this too, because there's another thing about batteries, is once they drop to, you know, around the 3 volt or there's a limit to the level of voltage that you should allow batteries to get down to. So um, you don't want them to get down to dangerous levels. And if you have, you know, you're a really low ohm build on here, like if you have a 0.2 or something like that, and the batteries have sagged down to a combined voltage of 4.5 volts, you're still going to be vaping it, or you're still able to vape it enjoyably. What I like about putting a 0.5 ohm build on there is that once the batteries drop down, you know, to about five volts between the two of them you're getting almost no vapor out of it and it's time to change the batteries and so i just think that the you know between 0.4 and 0.5 on a series build uh, is pretty much the limit that i would go to personally get this thing back together and start vaping on it
positive up, negative up. I got the atomizer already attached. We put that on the positive side, just to ensure a good connection there. Go ahead and throw the switch on here. Another safety feature with this mod that I'm going to ex um, express right now is that if you're building a coil, I wouldn't recommend building a coil on this mod, honestly, um, with batteries installed in it. Because as you're building the coil, it becomes really easy to fire this button accidentally. Um, so if you're on here, you know, wiggling with it with pliers or you have a screwdriver in there, it's really easy to accidentally depress this button and then you could, you know, potentially burn yourself or hard short or something like that. So if you're building a coil and you're using this mod to hold your RDA while you're doing it, I would remove the batteries before you do that. Or just use a different mod to uh, stabilize your RDA. But let's get this juiced up here. Cone fused, twisted drips. All right, go back out to normal mode and vape a little bit. Okay, well I hope that you guys found that video informative. Um, I will be doing a series build video here. Uh, eventually um, and you know before you comment about it or <laughs> anything like that I'm not an expert by any means on batteries or electricity or anything like that everything I know about um, this stuff as I've learned through vaping uh, from different resources and stuff so hopefully I didn't miss anything super important and I covered some of the basic safety features um, of working with a series mechanical box but anyway I'm really enjoying it. So, that's about it. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope you guys have a good new year.